Regine Willem Wynn from Arcade Fire, good to see you. Yeah, and and congratulations you. on your recent triumph at the, at the Mojo Awards. Best live act in the world ever. Or ever. Something, was it? <laughs> yeah, of all time. Of all time. <laughs> Take us back to the beginning of the band. I mean, it's like um, the, the roots of the band are in Montreal. You, you were, uh, the, the family came from somewhere else originally, is that right? Yeah, we grew up in, in Houston, right. Houston, Texas. Right. So how long were you there? What ages were you when, when you went up to Montreal? Um, I moved up to Montreal about six years ago. Oh, right. Oh, as yeah. recent as that. Yeah, yeah I went, yeah. I went uh, for university and right. was been playing music and... Um, I just really loved it. I I didn't know anything about it before I moved there, and then I just there's just it's really a culturally interesting city. And I met Regine pretty soon after I moved there and started doing stuff with the band. Right, right. And what about you, Will? Did you did you did you follow him? Did you follow your brother? Yeah, up pretty there? much. I, he gave you a call and said, "Come up here. It's great." Oh, I just sort of went back and forth. Yeah, like I was going to school in Chicago and uh -huh. just sort of going up there when I could. So now I'm up there now. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Took a did while. You, did you kind of collect people as you went along, you know, like Pied Piper style? How did it happen? Um, yeah, a bit. I mean, at first it was very much like, you know, I didn't know anyone in town. So it was like, you look interesting. What's your name? Oh, you play bass? Okay, you're in the band. You know, it was like, you know, I met a lot of people like in my film classes or, you know, at the art school or, or just around town. And then we kind of met some other like-minded bands and... Tim and Richard and Sarah were playing in another band that ended up, you know, breaking up at some point. And our band had kind of broken up at another point, so we kind of joined forces. Yeah, yeah. And Regine, you were singing sort of in jazz club style, that sort of thing. Was that what you were doing? Yeah, a little bit. And also uh, I was playing medieval music. Oh, right. And singing. Is that where the hurdy-gurdy comes from then? Is it? Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I didn't have it at the time. I was playing recorders and singing, but now Well, hurdy girls are quite expensive, aren't they? And very fragile. She's dreaming about it for I a long time. I was dreaming about it for so long, and I was so sad to not have a hurdy-gurdy playing medieval music. And now I'm in a rock band, and I got my hurdy-gurdy, <laughs> <laughs> finally. <laughs> Yeah. It just pays the bells for medieval obsession. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and, and you two are, are married, of course, so what did you sort of... Uh, See Regine singing across a smoky jazz club. I mean, or is my sort of romantic imagination <laughs> no, running away from me? Do you see this kind of uh, small woman in a red sparkly dress, no. like dreaming of hurdy gurdies on the stage? <laughs> no, it was, uh, we kind of met really briefly, and then I saw her. It was it was just at an art gallery, like at the at the university or whatever. It's a pretty low key affair. There's yeah, just like a guy in a digital piano and Regine standing there. But right. I really was. Uh, I mean, jazz is. If it's possible, it's in a worse place than rock music is. You know, it's like even more dead than <laughs> if that's possible. Is that possible? Well, anyway, they're both dead. Right. Uh, but well, it it was just really just, unusual. Just in the way that you can actually, you, there's like degrees in jazz and degrees in rock, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I think once you start having degrees in something and yeah. starts, I don't know. I mean, I guess. Well, in what have you got a degree you, in film? Huh? Have you got a degree in film? I've got a degree in uh, religious studies. Actually. Oh right, yeah. yeah. Well, religion's dead, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Particularly in Ask Montreal. Salman Rushdie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Knighthood. <laughs> Sir Salman Rushdie. Sir, Sir Salman, Salman Rushdie. Yeah. yeah. Sir yeah, Salman. Yeah, yeah. What about the difference between funeral and neon Bible? You mentioned the difference in the record. I mean, it sounds like it's more outward looking in that you've your you know maybe taking on the world is the wrong thing to say but it feels like it's more outward looking in terms of its scope and its messages is that is that true yeah i mean in a way when you're writing songs it's not like you necessarily decide what kind of songs you're going to write it, you don't really get to choose what your inspiration is going to be so i feel like these things kind of come in waves like you're you're interested you know, I think we're the type of writers who get really fixated on an idea and then you use songs to kind of get at it from different angles. So I, I think that's why a lot of times a lot of the songs you write in the same period of time have some kind of relationship to each other. I mean, that's what records are, I guess. Yeah. But you know, I mean, yeah. thus far our, our career has been pretty song-based. Like even when we're recording, it's like each song is pretty much in a different mode. I mean, we sort of attack all the songs from a different tack. It's just sort of how sort of the mood we're in and then you have 15 songs and realize that since you sort of wrote them and made them all in the same sort of times period they all hang together but it, I feel like we don't 
we don't necessarily approach it with like overarching concepts in mind. Right, right. Of, yep. I mean, so what was the what was the appeal of the neon Bible concept then? Um, just in terms of the songs and the kind of themes of a lot of the songs, it it just kind of seemed to. I don't know. We only have two records, so I mean, you just when you're coming up with a title for a record, it just has to kind of make sense with mm -hmm. the overall thing. But uh, do the songs grow then in in the in the playing? I mean. It, do they develop by you playing them collectively together rather than kind of emerge, you know, fully formed as a, you know, as a song first off? Yeah. I yeah. Mean, the arrangements definitely come from us playing together. But Certainly some songs more than others. Like, I feel like, you know, My Body as a Cage was pretty... There are some arrangement things that happen later, but a lot of the ideas were there and it was just sort of putting those ideas down. But then, like... The Well in the Lighthouse was a lot more us sort of banging it out in a room and arranging it all together and, you know, a little more evolutionary. And have you heard from David Bowie recently? Whether it, does, he, does he like the recent stuff as much as the early stuff that he went overboard on? <laughs> yeah, it's all, the early stuff's always better. You should hear our, <laughs> you should hear our, our, the, our demos before we made before our first EP. Demo. Yeah, it was like amazing. The first time we ever played was like the <laughs> that best was, that, was that it. we ever were. And it's all been downhill from there. Yeah, I mean, look at Bowie. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Does he feel like things have happened fast for you? Um, I mean, it's the only. I mean, besides like you know the couple of hits we had in the '70s with that <laughs> other career, it's kind of our only experience. So it's hard to say. Yeah. It's kind of an abstract concept, you know. It's kind of like it's your life. So your it life doesn't. It fast? doesn't seem terrifically fast, but probably is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it just seems to have gone from kind of small clubs to big arenas over here quite quick, yeah. quite quickly from the outside. But yeah. You know, you know, I no, I mean, it's uh, it's weird. It's like on this last tour in the States, two of our best shows were like two of the bigger ones yeah. and that were not in ornate theaters. There was like one that was in Vancouver outside, and there was another one in this weird kind of crappy 70s hall in Atlanta. Um, oh, yeah. And they were two of the best shows for me of the whole tour, and I wasn't expecting them to be the best. You know, I was like, oh, the Chicago Theater, it's so beautiful. Mm. But a lot of times the more kind of ornate, fancy places are actually kind of a bummer because, you know, they're used to having like Les Mis in there, and right, yeah. you know, it's like a much more uptight atmosphere. Right, yeah. And the more general shows when kids can get in and get to the front if they want to be there, yeah. it's just a really cool energy. So, I don't know, it'll be interesting to play some bigger shows and see if we like it or not. But in my experience, it's kind of like there's crappy shows and good shows, no matter what size mm. of room you're playing. And anyway, congratulations on all your success. Nice to see you. Thank you. Yeah, thank much. you very thank much. You. Thank you.